looking at a variety of different systems. Um, we look at photoreceptors and we look at photovoltaic materials and um, photocatalytic materials. So we're mostly interested in the early dynamics, what goes on in the first few nanoseconds. And so we have a amplified uh, TISAP system in order to to do the ultra fast transient absorption measurements. But a lot of these systems also have uh, chemistry and dynamics that happen on much longer time scales. So what we use the PISMO for is uh, to convert our ultra fast laser system into a spectrometer that can be used for longer time dynamics. Again, microsecond, millisecond dynamics. So, um, Usually in the amplified laser system, you're picking one pulse out of its a kilohertz system. So you've got your oscillator here that's at 80 megahertz. You're picking one of those pulses out to get amplified. And what comes out of the amplifiers is one kilohertz. All those other pulses here don't get amplified and they just go to waste. So what we do with the PISMO is pick another pulse out of that pulse train so that it can be used for the probe pulse in the experiment. So the pump pulse will still come from the amplifier, but now we're picking another pulse out um, that can be delayed at um, any increment of the 12 nanosecond um, repetition or period of, of the oscillator. So by picking these other pulses out, we can uh, choose to probe out beyond 10 nanoseconds, every 12 nanoseconds out as long as, as we want. Um, so it's an extension of the, the regular system. Um, so the, we had this installed in the um, line that would go to, to the amplifier. And, uh, and then right now, um, the pulse that gets rotated by the, the pulse picker would get um, ejected here from the, the polarizer cube, and then it would go down along this line. And we can use it either as 800 nanometer light, uh, as, as an 800 nanometer probe, or we can double it and use 400 nanometer light from it. But what we really use it for uh, is that here, so the 800 pulse would come down into this photonic crystal fiber. And because it's um, a highly nonlinear medium, you can actually generate white light uh, through cell phase modulation in this with the five nanojoule pulses coming out of the oscillator. So that's, we're, we're using unamplified light to generate the white light, and then we can use that for broadband probing. Uh, normally for the rest of our experiments, we do white light generation in sapphire or in calcium fluoride, and um, it requires more energy than what the pulses out of the, amp the oscillator can provide. So um, using the, the, the photonic crystal fiber is a way to uh, reduce the intensity constraints on, mm -hmm. on the white light generation. So uh, that then would go over here to sample area, and uh, the sample usually sits about there. So that you have the pump pulse and the probe pulse coming together in the sample. The probe pulse is transmitted through the sample and um, collected with the spectrometer here. That's in the sample cell here. Um, what we have found this system to be particularly useful is looking at um, some of the photovoltaic materials, um, or we also study um, triplet state formation, triplet state chemistry in um, uh, vitamin B6. Um, so that was published. Uh, so we, we look at a variety of samples. <laughs> Our looking at the polymer uh, P3HT. So polymers, uh, photovoltaics are an um, interesting material because they can, they're very cheap to make devices out of. And, um, and so we, we look at, this is kind of fundamental research, we're looking at what are the 
uh, exciton dynamics. After it absorbs the photon, it makes this bound electron hole pair. And then uh, you have to have, if you have another acceptor material in there that can rip that apart, um, you can separate your charges and then the charges can be collected in a photocell. So we are looking at the formation of the exciton, the decay of the exciton, and um, if the exciton can split up, then we are looking at that process. So normally, if it didn't have any other kind of uh, material mixed in, it was just the polymer by itself, it would uh, decay within uh, hundreds of picoseconds. Uh, but if you have the, this other acceptor material in there, then and you actually have the charges split up. The charges form these um, polarons that, that are living for nanoseconds. And so that, with our normal uh, transient absorption instrument, we can't see the decay of those because we are usually uh, using this stage as the time delay. And the time, the, this optical delay in a pump probe experiment, you have the pump pulse and you have the probe pulse coming at a later time. If you're looking at very short time delays, then you can't make that kind of time delay electronically. You have to do it with a uh, half length. Difference. So the probe pulse goes on to this stage, and we move the stage, and then um, based on how long light has propagated, uh, then we are choosing to put the, the delay on. But you can, this stage can only go out to um, give time delays of about eight nanoseconds. So that's why if we want to look at anything longer than eight nanoseconds, we have to think of a different way to come up with that time delay, and that's how we use the second pulse out of the oscillator as um, a variable time delay. So the photovoltaic devices, we can look at um, what is the lifetime of the charge separated state, and understanding the photodynamics there can then help our collaborators think of better ways to process the material so that they'll ultimately be more efficient. Study are um, used for hydrogen generation. So they, are, they um, once you have this charge separation, then um, you can reduce or oxidize water and split water into hydrogen and oxygen. But that process takes milliseconds to, to occur, so we have to connect the early photochemistry, what's going on with the charges, to the longer time scale chemistry that actually results in hydrogen generation. Uh, incorporating the PISMO into the laser system here is that with this one laser system we can study both the fast time and the slower times um, using the, this little trick with the oscillator pulse and picking out extra oscillator pulses with this. The other half of the lab is studying photoreceptors and there uh, we, we look at proteins like photoactive yellow protein um, where it's in the bacteria, it's responsible for phototaxis. It moves away from the light. So in those kinds of systems, we're looking mostly at the early dynamics. What's the excited state look like? And using those, uh, we can find out information about what causes the uh, changes in the absorption spectrum. And this whole, the whole chemistry of this organism, um, of this protein, is uh, dictated by uh, uh, excited state photoisomerization. So it has this chromophore, and it absorbs light, and it does this isomerization, and then um, it goes through a number of other steps in the photocycle, which it also takes the photo whole photocycle is about one second. So we are looking at the early parts of that uh, with this laser system, but we are um, starting to extend the range of, of our studies to looking at um, the whole photocycle and looking at dynamics on later parts of the photocycle. That's um, responsible for light regulation in plants. It's, um, it has a shade avoidance response. And we're studying there uh, the photocycle and the, the a lot of the phytochromes that come from bacteria have never been studied before. so. There, there's nothing really known about their excited state dynamics. They also have a um, sort of a tetrapyral 
uh, chromophore that does a nice summarization and that causes them to change between red or uh, far red spectra up to the oscillator pulse train as well. And so um, it, it's all phase locked and that reduces the jitter so we can select one pulse out um, with the Pismo and have it be synced up to the same 80 megahertz so source as um, the amplifier is synced up to and that makes, uh, eliminates all the pulse jitter and so we actually have um, precise enough timing between all of these instruments that you, that it works. Otherwise it, it doesn't work, you'd have a, at least one pulse uncertainty about your, your measurements. <laughs>